Hello everyone and welcome. In today's tutorial, we'll be using Silver Effects Pro with Lightroom. So we'll be getting this photo here from this photo here. So let's hop in here and get started. Okay. Let's first take the photo we're going to be editing and open it to the develop module. Okay. Now, we are going to be doing most of uh, the retouching in Silver Effects as far as the global adjustments. So, first thing we need to do is make sure uh, that this photo is white bounce and color correction has already been set. And that's because we're going to be exporting this over into Silver Effects Pro as a TIFF file. Now, I've already got my white balance set at a temperature of plus 6100 and a plus 4 on the tint. Now, the reason I have done this is because I've already adjusted the white balance. And additional, I've already got my color set over here in my hue, saturation, and luminescence. And I already did the color correction with my data color uh, color checker. Oh, excuse me, spider checker. <laughs> anyway, if you want to see that tutorial on how to correct your color stuff, I'll put that link up in the cards as well as in the description below. Now, I've also got my sharpening already pre-done. And I've also got my noise reduction done. It's because right now we're editing the raw file. But when we export it over to uh, Silver SFX Pro, like I said, we're going to be using a TIFF file. So you also want to make sure all your lens corrections and stuff is already turned on as well. Now my Sigma 18 to 35 art was already detected. So I've already got that done. I got my chromatic vibration already turned on as well. We should be good to go. So once you've got all that done, click back over into the library and take the file that we're going to be editing and let's edit it again in Silver FX Pro. Now you can go to edit in by right clicking on the photo. And if you have Silver FX Pro installed with the plugin, you should see it listed here as Silver FX Pro 2. Once you found that in your list, go ahead and click on that and Silver FX Pro will open up. Now you can see we've got a dialog already popped up here on the screen asking for file format TIFF, color space sRGB, which is what I'm editing in, 16 bit color depth and resolution 240. Of course, the resolution doesn't really matter, but we're not using any compression. So those default settings are what we want. Go ahead and click enter or click edit. Okay, wonderful. Silver Fix Pro is already opened up. Now, when you first get into Silver Fix Pro, you'll find there's a whole bunch of presets already created for you. Now, you can do a lot of global adjustments with this program. You can create stuff that's uh, very antique looking, just stuff that's more modern. Now, for this particular one, I want to go with one I've already got chosen, but I'm going to do uh, small adjustments to it. And because, like all presets, they're just basically to get you in the start in the right direction to kind of help your creati uh, creativity. So, for this particular one, I'm going to choose a high contrast. Now, as we can tell, that's really high contrast. And that may be more high contrast than we really want. But I'm choosing 004 here to start with. So when I do that, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to adjust my adjustments. Now, I'm going to lower my contrast. Now, right now it has a 17%. I'm actually going to go to a negative, I believe it's a negative, uh, say 60% is what I used. Yeah. And lower it down. As you can see, that brought back a lot of detail and stuff that was lost because that con uh, high contrast was just way too much. Okay. In addition, uh, the hair and stuff's really soft. Now, I like the way the, a lot of the preset made a, a lot of things look, but I want to see more detail in the hair again. So I'm going to go back here in order to structure and I'm going to go down to shadows. Now, if you see a lot of these and you're not seeing these, it's because you got these little triangles here, which arrows. You can click on that and bring up more information and stuff on them. So this will be under the global adjustments structure. Now, like I said, I'm going to pull back just the kind of the clarity that's on the dark areas, the shadows. So I'm going to pull that up by plus 60 and we can see that starts bringing back a lot of detail in the highlights of the hair. Yeah, about 61. And see, I brought back the hair quite a bit. I like that. I like uh, being able to see that shine in the hair. Now, you got a lot more options and stuff you can use here in uh, Silver Effects Pro. A lot more just, you know, minor adjustments and micro adjustments you can make. But this is all the ones I'm actually going to use for this tutorial. I just wanted to show these. 
kind of give everybody you know, kind of an idea that there is a lot of adjustments you can actually make. But like I said, there's even uh, the brightness contrast here, you know, the highlights, mid-tone, the shadows you can adjust. And kind of do a lot of the retouching that you normally do in Lightroom, you can do it here. Now, the presets already got most everything done for me that I wanted done. I only had to make those two adjustments. And that's really what the presets for is to kind of help you out. Now, once I've got that done, once you get that done, you can go ahead and click save. And this will save the TIFF file back into Lightroom for you. So let me go ahead and click save. And our file should be, uh, as soon as it's saved, it should say, uh, appear right back in Lightroom. Now we see the file is listed right here. Now I got my older one and I got this new one right here. And this is, you know, the second one that we're editing now. Okay. Now if I got it, let's open it back into Lightroom Develop Module once again. Now like I said, it, those presets got everything pretty much right. Now I like the way a lot of silver effects makes the skin and everything look. But there's a few adjustments I want to make here. One, I think the skin is probably just a little dark. Looking at the, uh, you see here the histogram up here at the top. And you see it's fairly close, but I want to adjust that just a little bit. I want to bring up the highlights, probably about a plus three or four here. Maybe about a plus four, plus three. I think that'll work pretty good up there. Because I don't want to break out too much. And we can see with the adjustments I just made there, you know, it's just very subtle. But a plus three works really good. Oh, let me put a three back in there. Okay. Now, I still think the skin texture is still pretty uh, rough. I don't mind rough too much, but for this ticker one, you know, female portraits, I like to keep them a little soft. So I'm going to lower this about a negative 20 on the clarity here. There we go, negative 20. That softens the skin up quite a bit. And I'm going to go down here again and do some post-crop vignetting. Now you notice that none of the lens and stuff is actually listed. All this is uh, saved previously. So none of that will show up now since we're not working with a raw file. We're working with a TIFF file. Now if you want to go back and do any sharpening again later or, retouch, uh, or uh, noise reduction, you do have that option to do that if you want to. I'm just going to just point out that it's not here now. So while it's important, we do those adjustments then. Okay, and I'm also going to bring this down, the post-crop vignetting, about a negative 30. Really darken those edges in. Negative 30 ones work really good. Now that's all the global adjustments. Let's go back over to a brush. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, pull up my hair pop, which is a dodging tool I use just for the hair. And I'll zoom in right quick for you so you can get an idea on this uh, brush preset. This is simple of highlights of 25, whites of 25, clarity of 25, and a saturation of 25 as well. That really makes the hair pop. Of course, saturation is not going to do much with black and white photo, but it still works really great all around. So we just kind of brush that on in the bright spots of the hair and it gives the hair a more dynamic look. Now, it's very minor very subtle most people wouldn't notice it but it's those little bit of details that add you know a lot to a photo and once we've got that done click new now I want to go up I want to find a skin softening mild now I don't this is just a simple one of clarity and minus 50 and I think that's about it on it yeah only in a sharpness of 25 so very small very minor just to kind of make the face glow a little bit. This is not to actually remove any kind of detail. Just to make a little glow look in that face. And that's really what I'm going for here. Just a little bit of a glow look. And I think that's all we need of that. So that's pretty much done for it. But we need to zoom in now and work on more of the eyes. Let me go and click on fill. Fill the frame here a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. Click new and let's pull up another brush here. Let's go to eye detail. Okay. Now we get the eye detail brush. We can brush on a little bit of more contrast and stuff into those eyebrows and above the eyes here and onto the eyelashes. Yeah, that makes the eyes look really nice, the details in them. 
And of course, if you want to know about this brush, it's just a simple contrast of 50, clarity of 75, and a sharpening of 50. That's all there is to that simple brush. Okay, and click on New. Now we'll go get another brush here. Now I'm using another one called I White, but it's a black and white one for one stop. Now this is a little bit different than regular I White. Regular I White only brings up the exposure on the eyes uh, one third of a stop. This particular one brings it up a full stop and it brings the saturation down a full negative 100. Now the reason this is important is it's really going to brighten up those eyes quite a bit which seem to look darker in a black and white photo. So paint this on, on the white part of the eyes. Try not to get it on anything else. Remember, you can erase if you need to. And you can see that looks really, really nice. Okay, let's click new again, then click on our radio filter uh, tool. That's the little circle one here. And we want to choose Iris Enhance. And this is another one's a black and white one uh, 1 1.5 uh, exposure 1.5 stops and of course this is a clarity of 10 and a saturation of 40 and this is really gonna make those uh, irises really stand out so let's draw a little small little circle over the eye and once we've got it drawn out we click duplicate and drag the other one over to the other eye and if you need to make it a little bit smaller to adjust different sizes you can and click done on that one and we see that really brought back a lot in the eyes there okay there's only one more brush I want to use now and that's uh, the little jewels brush it's a very simple one just exposure a plus one and a clarity 100 I use this a lot on little like rings and uh, earrings and any kind of jewelry kind of make them shine a little bit better and click done on that one. Now let's zoom back out. And you'll see, we're done with our photo and that's it. That's how I kind of use Silver Effects Pro with Adobe Lightroom. It works really great as a plugin, in my personal opinion, but there's still a lot of adjustment I like to rather do in Lightroom. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope everybody likes it. Hope everybody finds it helpful. And if you do like this video, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe is free, it's for you, and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.